That's um, Christmas with the Cranks, and it's actually my second most favorite Christmas movie. Um, but it's all about, if any of you haven't seen it before, I encourage you to watch it because there's nothing horrible in it. It's a nice little movie and it's about a couple, basically Tim Allen is the main actor and he's married, as Christine said, to Jamie Lee Curtis. And they, um, they have only one daughter and she decides to leave for the Peace Corps on um, Thanksgiving. And so she's going to be away for Christmas. So because she's going to be away for Christmas, they decide to go on a cruise. They purchase a cruise and they decide to go on a cruise and skip Christmas. But as our children always do, she calls, they're due to leave on Christmas Day and she calls on Christmas Eve and says she's change of plan, she's on her way back home for Christmas with her new fiance. And her new fiance is not American, so he's never experienced the American Christmas before with the parties and the food and all this sort of thing. So she wants him to experience this. So they go into panic. Bottom line is they end up having to cancel. They have to forget about the cruise, basically, and stay at home for Christmas. So they have to change their plans at the last minute. And I watch that movie every year. We go through, as we lead up to Christmas, we always pick out of a hat which Christmas movie we're going to watch next. And I love when we watch that one. And we watch it every year. I know it by heart now. But every time I watch that scene, I cry. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this year again, I cried again as I watched that scene. And I said to Enda, I need to do a teaching on this because I have to get it out of my system. How can you cry at the same scene? I know what's going to happen, <laughs> amen. But it makes me cry. And I often wondered, and like, if you know the movie, you'll know that the two families live across the street from each other and the two men don't get on very well. They aggravate each other a bit. And um, Bev, the wife in the movie, during the movie, they, they tell us like, that she has been, she's been sick and this could be her last Christmas. And so you're thinking, OK, that's emotional. You know, maybe that's why. And I, you know what? I sit and I think, yeah, maybe that's, that's why. But as I said, this year, I actually cried again and I cried harder. And I said, and I got to do something about this. And when I thought about it, and as I chatted with Enda about it, I got it. As I watched that clip, I watched two people do everything they could, come up with every excuse they could to decline the offer of a free gift. A heartfelt, as he said, a free, heartfelt, no strings attached, fully paid for a gift of a lifetime. And it reminded me of something. You see, in the natural, we think that's crazy. You'd be out of your mind to refuse a gift like that. Free, fully paid for, gift of a lifetime. Why would you refuse it? It's, it's heartfelt, no strings attached. And we think, you know, someone would be silly. Who'd reject a gift like that? But you think, we think that's unbelievable. But let's look at this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The penny went down, amen. That's what I see when I watch this clip. That's why I find that clip of that movie so emotional. They try to reject the gift. They've been handed this fully paid for gift of a lifetime, and they look for every reason to reject it. Yeah. Sound familiar, doesn't it? Mm. God gave us the greatest gift of all time, the greatest gift of a lifetime, amen? He gave us the greatest gift of all, and we as humanity tried to reject it. We as human beings were given a gift from God. God has given us this gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave us a gift through his son. God loves us so much that he sent his son. He loves us so much that he didn't want to be apart from us. And you know, it's Christmas. And I was thinking, let's do something Christmassy. I even went out and bought a Christmas jumper. Tesco, 25% off. You think, <laughs> like on Friday. As I said, let's do something festive. It's Christmas. The reason for the season is the baby Jesus, amen. And we talked to the youth about this a couple of weeks ago. You see, the enemy had tricked and deceived mankind. He had tricked and deceived mankind into giving themselves over to him. But you see, God loves mankind. So here you have the enemy tricking and deceiving mankind, and here you have God loving mankind, God adoring mankind, God treasuring mankind, amen? And you have two sides. God loves mankind. We are his creation. He loves us. But mankind have given themselves over to sin. And you see, here's where we have the problem, because God can't look on sin. 
But did God leave it there? God couldn't leave it there, amen. He loves us so much. He wouldn't leave it there. He loves us so much. So what does he do? He gives us the greatest gift of all. He desperately wants to have a relationship with us that he gave us the greatest gift of all. God, John 3, 16. And just from the Passion Translation, for here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And you might be sitting here today, and I know a lot of you, you might be sitting here today thinking, Angela, I know this stuff. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Amen. Thank God that you have. I believe that almost everybody in here probably has. And if you haven't, please talk to us afterwards. Amen. If you're watching online and you haven't, please get in contact with us. Amen. This gift is for you too. But this is what I want you to see today. This is what struck me with this. In the movie, when Luther is trying to hand over the gift, he explains it like this. It's a cruise. Ten days in the, Car in the Caribbean, islands, beaches, the works. See, that's what I love. It's islands, beaches, the works. Because you see, during the movie, they talk about going and getting tanned and going snorkeling and stuff like that. It's the works, amen. I love that. It's not just a cruise. Bottom line is it's a cruise, but it's the works. Uh -huh. There's so much more. Islands, beaches, snorkeling, all that. You see, when God gave us the gift of Jesus, yes, the bottom line is salvation. But there's so much more. Yeah. Amen. amen. There is so much more. God has, has given us the gift of salvation and praise God for it. But there is so much more. It's salvation. It's love. It's freedom. It's healing. It's forgiveness. The works. Amen. It's the works. God gave us a gift that keeps on giving. It keeps on giving. And if all you take from God's gift is salvation, that is amazing. Yeah. Amen. That is, we could close our Bibles and go home now. That is amazing. And you know, there are people in this life that will only accept that part of the gift as they close their eyes for the last time. But praise God, that's great because when they open their eyes again, they'll be with Jesus. Yeah. But for the rest of us who are so blessed that we receive this gift with time to spare, as it were. We need to use it to its full, amen. We need, we need to enjoy it at its fullest, amen. Yeah. There is so much more in this gift, this free, heartfelt, no strings attached, fully paid for gift of a lifetime. It's salvation and the works, amen. We can enjoy the works. Thank God for the works, amen. Thank God for the other benefits that we enjoy with this gift for a lifetime and this gift of a lifetime. You know, one thing with Enda and I, we definitely united on, it breaks our hearts when we see people not use God's gift fully. That just breaks our heart, amen? When we see people beat themselves up over stuff, beat themselves up over stuff, thinking that they're not worthy to have and receive this gift, that just breaks our heart. It's the gift of salvation and the works. Yeah. And the works are benefits, amen. And we're just gonna, there's so many benefits to the gift, but we're just gonna talk about three of them this morning. The first one is the benefit of forgiveness. This is a big one, guys, amen. This is a big one. You are so blessed because you have received this gift. You are so blessed that you have been saved, amen. You are so blessed that you are saved, but not only saved, you are also forgiven. Yeah. You are forgiven. Amen. Psalms 32, 1 says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Amen. It says it in the, the Passion Version like this, What bliss belongs to the one whose rebellion has been forgiven and whose sins have been covered by the blood? In the Amplified, I can go another one. It says, Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Amen. We are blessed, church. Yeah, we, are. we are blessed. God has forgiven us. Mm -hmm. Part of this free, fully paid for gift is forgiveness. Yeah. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, not only are you saved, but you are forgiven as well. You are forgiven, amen. All your sins are forgiven, all of them. But you don't know what I've done. You're forgiven. But you don't know what I've said. You're forgiven. Amen. I've sinned, I've lied, I've cheated, I've stolen. 
you are forgiven. Amen. You are forgiven. God has forgiven you. Hebrews 10.10. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And if you skip down to verse 17 and 18, it says, then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Amen. Don't you love that verse? Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. It doesn't need to be paid for anymore. Jesus paid for it all. Amen. You're forgiven. It's been paid for. It's paid in full. Forgiven. Jesus shed his blood for your forgiveness. It's done. It's part of the gift. So why can't we accept that? Why can't we accept that? Why, like in the clip, do we make the excuses? He came to them. The excuses started to flow. Her doctor wouldn't allow it. Benny might drop by. He had something on the front burner. The excuses started to flow. Men, you don't know what I've done. I'm so embarrassed. I'm not worthy. I'm so stupid. I keep messing up. It's done, it's forgiven, you need, it's taken care of, amen. You need to let that sink down. You are forgiven, amen. Amen. It's already done. Psalms 103, 12 says, farther than from a sunrise to a sunset. That's how far you've removed our guilt from us. He's removed our guilt. Isn't God so good? Isn't he so good? Your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. What you have done Jesus has forgiven. Amen. Amen. He has paid the price. He has removed your guilt. He has taken away your shame. So please stop beating yourself with that stick of shame and guilt. Amen. Amen. That's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Stop beating yourself with that stick. It has been lifted off you. Amen. You need to let it go. Stop looking for the excuses and let it go. Stop looking for the excuses and accept this free, heartfelt, no strings attached, fully paid for gift of a lifetime. Amen. Daniel 9, 9 says, but the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. John, 1 John 2, 12 says, I'm writing to you. I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. The scriptures go on and on and on. We don't have time this morning to get into them all. And I believe that's because God wants you to know that you are forgiven. Amen. There is so much about forgiveness in the word of God. You are forgiven. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for forgiveness. Amen. And the second benefit, the second part of the works is healing. Did you know that you are healed? Jesus bore those lashes on his precious body to make sure that you were healed. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are Healed. healed. We know it so well, but do we believe it? That's the thing, isn't it? His stripes, they're blows that were cut in, amen? He took those blows that were cut in so that we could be healed. Healing is one of the benefits of the cross, just like forgiveness is, just like salvation is. Mm -hmm. Healing is one of the works, if you like to put it like that. The gift of Jesus includes healing. Jesus, he took care of every sickness, every disease, amen. Matthew 4, 23 says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all all kinds of sickness and all all kinds of disease among the people. Don't you love that? I love the way the Bible is just so good. It even says sickness and disease. So God can heal cancer. But if you're thrown up in a bucket, he can heal that too. Amen. Amen. Sickness and disease and all of them. Amen. He healed all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of diseases. And he'll do it for us too. Amen. Amen. When he went to the cross, he took those stripes. He took those blows, amen, so that we could be healed. So please, do not let anyone tell you today that healing is not for today. Amen. Yes, it is. And we look for too many excuses. Benny might drop by. Uh, Couldn't leave the cat. Sorry, Lorraine. It's a cruise. Sorry. (laughs) Gotta leave the cat. Tim Allen feels about cats about like I do. Amen. Couldn't leave the cat. How many times do we use excuses? You know, I know somebody that had the same sickness and she wasn't healed or, you know, ah, sure, God chooses who he heals. He might heal 
you he might not. They're excuses, amen. And we never, please, we never make light of anyone's past experiences or past hurts. But that doesn't change the fact that Jesus is still a healer, amen. Yeah, amen. He is a healer. Don't allow people's past experiences talk you out of the fact that Jesus is a healer. Don't let them talk you out of believing God for healing, amen. Yeah. Healing is for today. Sickness is not a punishment, guys, amen. Yeah, right. Sickness is not a punishment that you have to bear. Jesus has healed you. It's already done. It's part of the gift. It comes in the package, amen. Yeah. By his stripes, you are healed. Our work, it's already done, amen. Salvation, forgiveness, healing, it's all part of the gift. It's all part of the package. And it's all for you, amen. It's all for you. Praise God. God is good. Are we still with me today? Yeah. yeah. It's warm in here this morning, isn't it? Amazing <laughs> change for this building. Praise God. God is so good. So we have salvation, we have forgiveness, and we have healing. And another benefit is freedom. Can I just remind you of that one this yeah. morning? Amen. Freedom. Amen. When you accept the gift of Jesus, and when you, when you accept the gift of Jesus in its fullness, it brings freedom. Amen. John 8, 32 says, for if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. John 8, 36 says, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free yeah. indeed. Amen. Acts 13, 39 says, everyone who believes in him is set free from sin and guilt. Uh -huh. God has set you free. Amen. Amen. He's taken away the shame. He's taken away the embarrassment. Amen. So take off the shackles. Walk out of the prison. Amen. You are free. Smell it. Amen. Smell the freedom. Can you imagine a prisoner coming out of prison when he's been released and he comes, you see it in the movies all the time, he comes out outside the gates and he just breathes. He smells in the freedom. Amen. There's a smell of freedom. And that smell of freedom is all around you. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's paid it all through his gift. All you have to do is receive it and accept it. Salvation, forgiveness, healing, freedom. It's all part of the gift, amen? It's the cruise and the works, amen? amen? It's all part of the package and it's all for you. Along with so much more, joy, hope, peace, contentment, all that is included in there as well. Why do we, why do we accept the gift of salvation but struggle with the rest of it? That always amazes me. And you know, I've been guilty of it in the past myself. You know, why can't we accept the works, amen? Wow. Luther said to them in the movie, this is a simple gift. Don't make it complicated. Yeah. How many times as Christians do we make the gift of Jesus complicated? Yeah. We complicate it. God gave it to us. He gave it to us out of love and we complicate it. We make it more awkward and more complicated than it is. God is saying, this is my gift. It's a gift from me to you. Don't make it complicated, <laughs> amen. amen. We know we're saved and still we beat ourselves up when we make a mistake, when God has forgiven us. You know, we know we're saved, but we decide to live with the sickness when Jesus has healed us. We know we're saved, but we allow ourselves to stay imprisoned in bondage when Christ has set us free. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, as I said, it pains us to see Christians walk around beaten up, broken down, Amen. Shadows of what they should be. That's not how it's meant to be. Amen. We talked about this a few weeks back with our Abundant Life series. We should be the happiest, most joyful, most peaceful, most, peaceful, most contented people on the planet. Yeah, right. We should. Amen. We should. Yeah. We should be oozing joy. We should be oozing happiness. We should be oozing peace and contentment. You know, in the movie, when they had exhausted all the excuses, they gave excuse after excuse after excuse. And when they had exhausted all the excuses, you know what they said to him? But our names are not on the ticket. They thought we'd get him with this. Our names are not on the ticket. Your name is on the ticket, amen. Your name is on the ticket. You are worthy. Jesus made the way, amen. Your name is on the ticket. Jesus, put your name on that ticket. Salvation is yours. Forgiveness is yours. Healing is yours. Amen. Freedom is yours. Joy is yours. Hope is yours. Peace is yours. Contentment is yours. It's yours. Your name is on the ticket. Your name is on the ticket. And listen to me, please hold on to that ticket. 
Don't let anybody, including yourself, talk you out of letting that ticket go, amen? Yeah. Don't let anybody tell you that you've lost that ticket, amen? You cannot lose that ticket, amen? Once you have it, you have it. Don't let anybody tell you you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, amen? But Jesus made it so. Jesus paid the price for us. Jesus paid the price. No more excuses. It's all for you, amen? It's all for you. You know, in the movie, they say, we can't take it. It's not right. You can take it. It's right. It's okay. Jesus did it. It's okay. Jesus made it right. He took it all on himself so that we could be blessed. How good is our God? He just wanted us to be blessed. Amen. Isn't that amazing? He wants you to have this gift. He wants you to have his gift. So take it, accept it. It's okay. He's giving it to you. Amen. Yeah, amen. And then finally he said to him, what's it cost? Because, you know, if we decide to take it, we, we're going to have to reimburse you. He couldn't just understand that this guy was giving him a free gift and they could just take it. That makes me smile. Every time I see that part, I smile. The tears go to a smile, then I go back to tears again. They wanted to pay for the cruise. They couldn't just accept this sincere, heartfelt, no strings attached gift for free. They wanted to pay a price. We're like that sometimes, aren't we? Yeah. We feel that we have to pay the price for God's gift to us. You know, we feel we should pay something. Maybe not money, sometimes it's money, but maybe we feel we have to work for it. We have to earn the gift. We have to do something to make ourselves worthy for the gift. Amen. And that's so far from the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. There's nothing there. There's nothing in that verse. You can study it and scrutinize it. There's nothing in that verse that says you have to reimburse him for it. Amen. There's nothing in that verse that says you have to pay for it. It's free. He loves you so much. He loves humanity so much that he has given it to us for free. So why do we have a problem with free? We don't have to pay for it because it's already paid for. Amen. If you went to the riverside, for instance, now after church and had a meal and when you went to pay for it, the waiter said to you, oh, that's already paid for. Enda was in earlier and he paid for it. Yeah, he might. You never know. Enda was in earlier and he already paid for it. Would you pay it again? No, you wouldn't. You'd say, thanks very much, Enda. I enjoyed that. <laughs> and you'd go home, wouldn't you? Why do we feel that we need to pay it again? Jesus has paid the price in full. Nothing is owed for this gift. Amen. He's completed it. It's done, it's finished, he said. We don't need to reimburse it. We just need to receive it and walk in its fullness. Mm -hmm. No cost, no payback. Don't make it complicated. Amen. And finally, just before we go, why did he do it? As we said earlier, he did it out of love, amen? He couldn't bear to be separated from us for God so loved the world. So please don't run with the doctrine that's out there as well that only the elect are saved, amen? Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. Jesus died for everybody outside these four walls. Yeah, amen. amen. And he did it motivated by love. For God so loved the world. If you look at Ephesians 2 4, verse 4. By, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. God loves you. Amen. He loves you unconditionally. Yeah. There is no greater love than the love that God has for you. Amen. Amen. You see, God loves you because he, he can't help himself. He has to love you because he is love. God is love. So he can't help himself. He can't deny himself. He loves you. It's the agape love, the highest form of love. God is obsessed with you. He can't get enough of you. Please, as you go into the Christmas season, remember that. You are God's chosen. You are God's favorite. You are God's favorite child. Amen. He loves you. He's obsessed with you and he can't get enough of you. And something that I noticed in it, if Walt and Bev in the movie hadn't accepted the gift of the cruise, Luther told them that it would be lost. Do you remember? Because he said, I didn't take out the travel insurance. And I was thinking about that, you know, and actually I thought about it last night and I thought, God loved the world so much that he didn't take out travel insurance, if you want to put it that way. Jesus went to the cross, guys. He went to the cross knowing. He went to the cross for the world, 
but knowing that there were people in this world that would never receive him, would never acknowledge him, would never reciprocate. That's love, amen. Yeah. That is love. That Jesus would go to the cross knowing exactly who would reject him, but still go for them anyway. Still give, him, give them the chance, amen. Still give them the opportunity. That's real love, amen. But the good side of that is there are people that will. We did, amen. And there are more people out there that will. So I want to encourage you, because I know next Sunday we're up for our uh, carol service, but be intentional this Christmas, amen? Be intentional this Christmas season. Christmas is a great open door to talk to people about God. Christmas and Easter are great open doors. It's a great time for sharing God's love. You know, the world can try and commercialize Christmas time. I was thinking about that last night. And the world is trying to commercialize it big time, isn't it? But deep down, deep in everybody, they know the real reason for the season, amen? We just need to talk to them about it. So let's be open and willing to share the gospel. I ask you that question this morning, are you bold enough? Will you say to God, because if you ask him, he will send somebody across your path that you can share the gospel with, he's faithful, amen? So are you brave enough this morning? <laughs> are you bold enough this morning to ask him to send somebody across your path this Christmas season? Do you know if every one of us in here just talk to one person about the gospel this Christmas season, so many more people in January would be availing of this gift, amen? amen? So many more people. So I encourage you, and know he will be with you. He never leaves you and he never forsakes you. He'll be with, with you as you do it, amen? Finally, for you yourself, last scripture. I want to encourage you to take off the wrapping paper. Do you know what really irritates me is if you give somebody a gift and they open up the first part and they see what it is and they just leave it there. Oh, that's grand, lovely, thanks very much. They don't open it down fully. Open the gift fully, amen. Unwrap the, full, the gift fully. Take the wrapping paper off it, amen, completely. Because it's all for you. Don't just unwrap salvation and then leave the rest there. Take the Christmas paper down fully. It's all for you, amen? It's all for you. Last scripture, Psalms 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives you all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. God has given it all to you, amen? Yeah. It's a gift from God. Don't make it complicated. Amen.